Welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Eleni Summershields and I have Brandon Wise, our CEO, Wise Agent, with us here today. So I'm excited to have Brandon. Yes. It'll be fun. Um, so, all right, we've got, I'm gonna set this, let me set up my screen so I can make sure I have everything that I need to see. Um, if you're joining us, please write in the um, chats where you guys are at right now. We are coming to you from Fountain Hills, Arizona. Um, at our Wise Agent office. And um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to post them in the chat or in the q and A. I'll be um, I'll be watching both of those for us and, and going through some of these questions. So, hey, Miguel. And this has become a, uh, a weekly webinar series that Eleni is hosting now. And I'm extra honored that she asked me to be on for uh, National Entrepreneur Day, I just, I just heard. Yeah. So, so see, there's a method to my madness. I don't, I didn't tell you <laughs> everything though, Brandon. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so this has become a weekly, a weekly webinar series that we're doing. And it just really um, happens um, to be um, just, you know, it's not on a particular day of the week, kind of has to fit in my schedule. And then, um, so today we are I think today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. So some days it's, so I try and do it Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, but um, Sarah and our marketing team, they do a great job of posting it in our community and our channels, on our social channels, as well as emailing people out. Um, and then you can also find this in our events page from wiseagent.com directly. So um, if you have any questions, I already see a couple of them coming in. So feel free to post those in Q&A or in the chat and we'll get started here in a minute. So um, again, thank you everyone that's joining us. You know, today we're gonna be talking about um, I think the title of this is Word from the Wise, Why a CRM is a Necessity. So um, it's so fitting that Brandon's last name is Wise. And it is, Brandon, can you tell everyone that this is your real last name if you have not changed it, hey, right? I, I, uh, I was born with it and, and uh, then, then Wise Agent came after it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that's a great segue to start on like why you, um, you know, what were you doing? Because so if, if you guys don't know um, Brandon, if you have never met him, um, he's a great guy. And I'm not saying because um, he's our CEO and, and on this, but he is a great person. And um, if you um, knew before, so he was a realtor here in the Valley in the Phoenix um, area about 18 years ago before Wise Agent was started. And so Brandon, I think everyone would love to hear from you like, what was it, what were you doing as a realtor back then that wasn't working for you that prompted you to, to start Wise Agent? Yeah, sure, sure. So the, the quick version was um, as, a, as a rookie agent, I started getting busy and uh, as the busier I got, I started dropping some balls. And it was just like little things like maybe um, I forgot to schedule, to add a new listing to the MLS tour for that week. but. It was big to the to the seller, you know, or or I forgot to print out my flyers when I drove all the way to to Gilbert, Arizona, you know, from where I was at, and got there and had no flyers. So little started dropping little balls, and then it it was really it came down to a day where I I um, almost forgot to turn in the uh, home inspection um, on on a time deal, you know, and so yeah. I realized, man, if I don't get my business organized. Um, I'm going to end up making a costly mistake and, and the last thing I want to do is do something that's going to hurt one of my clients. Yeah, 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 because that's, that's what led it. Well, well, and I think that's still a problem today. I mean, that a lot of people, I mean, if you're not organized um, and I, you know, I tend to be a little um, just on the tad bit of the obsessive compulsive side of organization. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, organization is so important in this business because you there's so much that's involved in in the process of buying or selling, you know, going through a transaction with somebody. Right. So you can't miss out on any of those steps because it will cost you. Um, it will it will be a costly mistake. And that so, is uh, one of the reasons why Eleni is our COO, because she is so organized and something that I needed next to me so much. <laughs> Thank you. Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I am. And that's, I'm, and I think that's, a, that's key for a lot of, a lot of agents. And, you know, if you're, um, if you're not that organized, and that's one of the, the problems that Wise Agent solves for you is that to keep you organized and have um, those checklists that will, you know, keep you on track and remind you of what needs to be done. Um, a lot of, uh, I think what a lot of people 
um, may miss the mark on is how the, the templates work, which I think is just such a great way of thinking about it, how, um, because the transactions in real estate are really similar. I mean, all the steps are really the same. It's just the dates that change, right? And then the people obviously in the properties, but everything else pretty much stays the same. You need to have something done 10, 10 days before closing or 45 days after signing or whatever it is. Um, and that's how our templates are set up. So then you don't ever miss that and you don't have to calculate those because that's a lot of calculation that can really screw you up. So um, that's a really good thing. So I wanted to know, Brandon, um, and I think a lot of people want to hear this is that so now at 18 years after Wise Agent has, you know, come out and out of its inception and everything, what do you think are, um, you know, some of the, do you think some of the issues that, that realtors face are still the same, or do you think there's other problems or um, they still need help with organization? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think looking at it 18 years later, um, it, the it, real estate business still comes down to the same basic principles. And when I got into it, we had a really high, the industry had a high turnover rate, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of agents would get in and fail. And I think the rate has stayed the same the whole time. Um, and so, yeah, the same problem still exists here, you know, from going, going, looking back 18 years, we still haven't got that, those solved. And a lot of it might be the mindset when you get in thinking it's going to be easy and it is, it's all going to, everything will fall into place. You don't have that, that mindset that, Hey, I've got to get in here and work hard and, and really do all the things. And then the other part just comes down to, um, not being organized and not having your systems and processes in place to, to yeah. make it a successful business. So that, like back 18 years ago, um, was there, so I've never been a realtor, um, just as a disclosure out there to everybody, but 18 years ago, were people buying leads, like they're buying leads, you know, maybe, um, I don't know if people are buying them as much now with the pandemic, but as much as they've been in the past. No, that, that wasn't really even a thing. Um, when I started, you know, you could buy some leads and, and there was a little of that, but that that wasn't the big thing. Um, you were you were doing the basics that we're still doing today. The things that still work: holding open houses, farming a neighborhood, you know, sending out your, your flyers and making the phone calls. But um, now now we have all these these leads coming in. They should make it that much easier. But if you're not doing it right, it ends up uh, you still have the same problems with not not having your business organized and not having the process uh, the systems in, in place to to run it the way you need to. And a lot of these leads just go go to nowhere and no one even calls them because you're you don't have the process in place. Yeah. I think that's a really important part too of it is, you know, having, you know, making sure it's those follow-ups. And after all, and I say this week after week after week, I, I feel like people are gonna be tired of me saying this, but it is, you know, about building those relationships. And I think, you know, you have to be as a realtor, you really should be really good at that part is, you know, building relationships and you know, having that repeat business. What is it? Um, 86% of, um, you know, buyers or sellers that go through a transaction with their realtor don't do a repeat, you know, transaction right. with them, which is crazy statistic, you know, but I think that's got to be one of it too, is building that relationship. It, I mean, the, the key to this business is building relationships. So that's, that's it. The key to the business, you have to be good at building relationships or, or learn how to, to build those relationships if you want to, if you really want to get, get there. Yeah. Um, so what's, um, what's the one thing that agents should be preparing to do most um, to, to get more business? What should they be preparing right now to get more um, business? You know, I, I mean, now you've got so many different ways to get business and you don't have to go with all the new technology of buying leads. You, like I said, you can, you can go back to the things that have always worked and, and work on the, the for sale by owners or hold the open houses. Yeah. Um, but whatever it is, I think you, you, you can look at all the different techniques that we have out there available for you to get business and then listen to your, yourself. You still put your personality into it and find those few things that are going are gonna to be the things that you're going to feel comfortable with because the key to it is the consistency. After you decide, hey, I'm going to hold it an open house, you know, at two open houses every week or I'm going to send out postcards every month, whatever you're going to do. Make sure that you're consistent and be thinking long term. I think that's a, another big, big issue is people think that it's instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. And that long term, I mean, that's when we, um, was it last year? 
um, around this time of year, we came out with our goals, right? Our goal tracker, or was it earlier this year? I can't even remember um, when we came out with it, but with our goal tracker, I know that's been a huge thing for you that you love is our goal tracker. Yeah, we've, been, does... we've wanted to nail that for so many years, but to, to do it right and keep it simple, um, it's taken a lot of time, but yeah, that's it. I'm very proud of the, the goal tracker. And, uh, and you can see by the comments we get every day, um, the, the agents, the, the team leaders, and the coaches that promote Wise Agent all agree and love love our day tracker, our, our um, goal goal tracker. Goal tracker, yeah. And so I'm going to show it here. I'm going to just share my screen a little bit because I think you know we're right now we're in November. This is when you know if you haven't already started thinking about your goals for next year, this is definitely the time to start doing that because it's so important to you know set something, track it, and then just be it. Go, you know, like Brandon said that you know, look into it as that long term um, and not just kind of like a, a one and done type of thing. So um, what what goals would you, you know, recommend having? I know we've got a few in here that I think you you actually added in here. Right? Yeah, I, I, we, we've, I kind of went in and added some just just so that we could we could give some examples. But I think the key to this goal tracker is the fact that you set your annual long term sales goal on, okay. on the left side of the screen and then on the right side, you can set all your short-term goals that you're going to have to do and, and hit these short-term weekly and monthly goals to reach that, that annual long-term sales goal. And so now you can track and see, hey, if, if your goal was to, was to get three listing appointments, and you know that's your, know your numbers. And if that's your number, you have to get three listing appointments to hit this, this goal. Then you're able to track how many, how many appointments did you get this week versus last week and, and go back and look at that so you know are we hitting our short-term goals? And if so, then we have a really good chance that we're going to hit our, our annual long-term goal. Yeah, I think that that's a, a great thing. So what would be the one thing, I know you love our goal tracker, what would be the one tool that you would not be able, as an agent, like, so if you were still an agent, what would be the one tool that you would not be able to live without? I already know my, like, what my would be. <laughs> what would and, you know, you know, with all the cool technology that we've added and, and all the the you know everything right now is all the focus on leads um i would still have to go back to the basics and and know hey, if you don't have a, a way to organize your transactions and keep it and make sure that you're hitting everything in a timely manner and and know what you're doing um you're gonna you're gonna fail so i would have to go if, if i had to pick one tool um it would be the, the transaction checklist that you, you yeah. know, opening up here yeah. So, I mean, I think after and after hearing what you had said, so before you had said, you know, keeping organized and everything else, I would have said like using our marketing, using our landing pages and the property flyers and all that other stuff in our drip campaigns and texting would be my thing. But I could totally see how, you know, having the checklist and I want to just share a little bit on what the checklist looks like, you know, and, we, and this is something that, you know, we're always improving. And this is part of what I do on my day to day is kind of um, overseeing the, um, you know, just that the site is is looking right and everything is um, is working properly, but it's also um, up to date and, and we're working towards that in the whole entire site. But I really love how the transaction um, checklists look like now and, and um, they act the same they, they did, you know, many, many years ago as well, but there's some improvements that we've made to it, especially on the look side and look and feel, but it is really cool that you know exactly what you need to do is add it to the website, it just checks it off for you, it puts in the date and, you know, if you have it set up where um, it makes a note in it, there will be a note added to it, you can add all your documents in here and just keep everything under one you know, just like one umbrella so that you're not, you know, going through a ton of paperwork or um, a ton of, you know, files or whatever in your, your emails, that'd be the worst, especially for me, that would be horrible um, to find something. So everything in here um, would be under one place where you can just go in there really easily, look that up and, and just have that at your fingertips. And it's but, easy to, it's easy to keep track of it when you only have one or two listings or a couple buyers at a time. But we're, uh, the mindset needs to be, hey, what, what am I going to do when I have 10 or 20 or 100 listings at, at a time? How am I going to know which house I have the lockbox on and which house needs to be put on the office tour and so on? So um, the, getting the system in place when you're not busy is key to helping you get, get to that next level when you're, when you're going to need a system in place. 
For sure, for sure. And we we use this internally. I mean, um, and yeah, so- Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It yeah. flip the question on you because we actually do use our own system to run Wise Asian as a company and Eliti's in it every day. What's the one tool that, that you couldn't live without in Wise Asian? Well, I mean, now that you kind of convinced me on transactions, that's what I was, you know, I was not going to say that, but now I feel like I should. But um, I would say, you know, I think the call list is a really good one if you're not, you know, following up with people and doing that. You know, what I've been saying is, you know, all, I've been saying this for weeks on weeks is, you know, keeping up with those relationships. And how do you remember to call 50 or 100 people every month, that's going to be, you know, you can't keep all of those people straight. So you have to get in here and just add people to your call list and make sure you're making those phone calls, adding your notes, setting up your follow up, because that's really, um, you know, even if it's like left a voicemail and then you got to call them back the next day or the next hour or whatever it is, make that note so you can get that reminder to follow back up with them, you know, a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later. Um, so that's what before you said the transaction thing but now yeah, like, yeah maybe and, and on this i would just say the notes man that's so critical that you get get really good at keeping date and timestamp notes because like you said it's one thing to just to even try to remember the 50 or 100 people you need to follow up with but then to remember what you talked with them about last week or last month so that you can go right into that conversation you've got to have good notes and so it just makes sense to be adding your notes in the same place that you're scheduling your calls and that you have all the all the other um, contacts information. And so we've kind of put it all in one in the call list. And yeah, this is another really, really valuable back to the basics tool that, that gets used all, all the time by, uh, by our yeah. members. Yeah, I mean, and this is something, um, so we mentioned earlier that we, you know, we use Wise Agent internally. So we use every single feature in here. I mean, um, you know, the call list is being used, the task list is being used, the transactions, we keep track of all of that and we use it, you know, and so if you're maybe a broker or uh, maybe you're starting a brokerage and trying to figure out how you can do things, I mean, having something where it's even a checklist on, you know, how to recruit or how to get new agents onboarded, that's a, a great way to, um, to use that. Um, and your checklists don't have to be just about the transactions. It could also be about the listings. I mean, that's kind of part of the transaction, but I haven't really gone in, through anything or exchanged any money. But, um, but I think having a checklist that will keep you on track with anything that you're doing repetitively should become a checklist template. Don't you agree with that, Brandon? I mean, it should be right, something right. that- Right, just, right. Just like here, when we hire a new customer support rep or any, anyone to work at Wise Agent, we have a, a checklist set up to uh, to walk us through all the things we need to do to onboard our new employee. Same thing, we have our, a lot of our, our brokers have a transaction checklist set up so that every time they uh, bring a new agent into the office, it walks them right through all yeah. the processes and stores all the documents there. So you can use them for, for anything um, that, that you're gonna have to do more than one time. Yeah. So somebody's asking here a question about the checklist. Um, can you somehow, if there's a checklist that you have an appraisal scheduled for, can you somehow have an email go out automatically to the buyer's agent to let them know when it's scheduled? So the automation part, you know, not so much, but I think, um, let me go into this checklist here and I'll show you what you can do. Um, we've made it really easy for you to send an email or to do whatever, any of the tasks that you need to do. So a lot of the times when we're um, you know, building something out for Wise Agent, we do consult with Brandon since he was in your shoes, right? And he did your job. So that's one of our main resources of like, hey, Brandon, how did it work when you were an agent? What, you know, and he still recalls every single bit of it. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, we also ask our members what their opinions are on things. But um, if you're going to be doing some kind of transaction or, you know, you're going through, I think the question was about an appraisal and you want to just make sure that the buyer agent is, um, you know, is knows that that's happening. So what you can do is you can see there's a <clears throat> cooperating agent. Maybe this is the, um, you know, buyer's agent. So you can quickly send them an email from here. Um, and type out your message saying, you know, the appraisal has been scheduled, blah, blah, blah. You could attach whatever it is that you need to attach and then just click on send now and send that email. So, um, and then it goes out, of course, all of our emails go out branded with your information. So it's a really quick and easy way of getting um, that message out. 
to somebody without um, without having to get out of your checklist and you know find who the cooperating agent is. That's why these important contacts are really important to have here is so then you can refer back to them when you're going through that transaction. So hopefully Janice that um, answers your question and gives you a, a little bit of a, a shortcut into getting some some of your um, work done quickly. So. And, and years later that comes into play when you're busy and your phone rings and it's and it's a, a client from the past says hey you know you sold me my house three years ago can you give me the name of the appraiser and instead of having to dig through your folder you, you have it all right there you know? so um, for sure take advantage of, of all the fields here that, that you can put everything in one spot yeah so definitely. i see uh, oh uh, sorry I was, I was just reading a question here i'd like to know the legalities about who i can add to my crm as, as a lead and so really um with wise agent you can add every single person you want there is no uh there's no limit in in wise agent crm to the number of people you can add and and so we want you putting everyone in here whether they're your friends and family um your past clients your brand new leads people that are in a neighborhood that you've never met that you want to start farming um, you want to put them all in here and then and, and and it's legal to have everyone in there there's no legality about it and then the idea is that you want to make sure that you're using the categories um, to really filter the filter everyone down so that at any time, if you just want to send out a mailing just to a new neighborhood that you're farming, you can just select your farm, select them all, and then hit send, you know, type your message and hit send and mail to those people versus, um, you know, maybe you're, you're having a, a get together and you just want to pull up all your friends and family and, and invite them up. So you can, you can uh, use it for everyone. There's no limit to it. You can't overload it with, with names. Yeah. Um, Eleni, do you want to speak to maybe the legalities of sending emails? That might be, be yeah. where, where they were going with that question. Yeah, so sending out emails, that's different. That does have, um, so you want to make sure that anyone that you're um, adding into your CRM, you're going to have um, their permission for their email address. So obviously if you're using our landing pages, if you're using, you know, because if they're coming in from Zillow, they're not really understanding. There is no, there's no double opt-in. And so what we've done is we've included this double opt-in for you to make sure that you're not getting in trouble. Um, we're not getting in trouble on your behalf to send out these emails. Um, that's something that's really important. We, um, we've written I don't know, a ton of blogs on this. Um, and that can, that conversation can go on for at least an hour on, on emails and email sending rules. So make sure that you're sending out and when they unsubscribe, we take care of all the unsubscribes for you. So then you're not having to sit there and say, oh, it's, you know, what happened here? What happened there? You know, if, do I, I need to go in there and put them in an unsubscribe? We also handle um, bounced emails. So here is like John Dutton, you know, at yellowstone.com. Obviously that's not a real email address. So that someone tried sending out an email here, it bounced, we handled it. So now if I try to go send this email again, it won't go out. Um, we, we take care of your email reputation for you and we take that really seriously. So um, that that is a one that is um, a good question, Brandon. But I, the other thing I wanted to add in about um, adding contacts, you know, we've we've made it really easy for you to add contacts. So you can use this add contact um, modal here. You can use our um, Chrome extension. You can add our um, contacts through importing and. Um, our import feature, then you can also add them through um, our Google sync, our Google contact sync. So there's a ton of different ways. And I think, you know, one of my, my favorite ways is adding them through your, through our Chrome extension, because it just makes it so quick and easy, just click of a button and it just adds people in there. So it's definitely something that you guys should be um, trying out if you haven't yeah. done so. And that Chrome extension, what she's talking about, that works on, that lives in your Gmail. And so when, as, you, as you're getting uh, a lead that comes in your email, maybe just, just someone emails you, um, instead of having to copy and paste everything and put it in your CRM, you can hit the button and it'll move everything right over. Yeah. Um, I saw a few more email questions. Did, did you answer uh, the, um, the limit, how many emails you can send out to the wise agent? Oh, I didn't, um, I didn't see those questions. So the limit, there's 2,500 emails um, limit per day. Um, from day. Wise, so it's per right. day. So what is that like 30 some, some thousand emails a month 
which is a ton of emails. Um, and those all, and I do see another um, question here about that. When once you send those um, emails out, if you're if you have your own domain, we can um, include your own domain in there. So it, it and no matter what, it doesn't go out. Um, it does go out from our servers, but then the inbox it is go or the um, replies all go to your inbox. So we don't have time or um, the inkling to want to read any of your emails. So those will all go into your email. Um, so those um, don't come back to us at all. So that was um, one of the questions. Um, and there's a question about um, content that we that we help you to, to deliver to your clients, any content we provide. So um, that's a good question. That kind of leads to probably the RSS tool. Um, one, one of the things that's really big when you're adding contacts to your database is that you want to make sure you're using those categories that we talked about. And, and not only are you putting them in the categories that you already know, hey, this is my farm, these are people um, that it, you can also put a source, like where you met them. Did they come from an open house? Were they walk in? Did they come from a Facebook ad? Uh, and then um, as you're driving people around uh, in, in your showing houses, it, when they start talking about their interests, say, hey, after you get done showing me a house today, I'm going to go hiking, go hike Camelback Mountain. Well, then when you get back to, in your CRM, you want to put them in a category called hikers, or if they're going golfing, put them in golfers. And it doesn't matter if you're interested in golfing or hiking or biking or whatever you, you're finding out as you're building this relationship, you're paying attention, you're listening to what your clients are telling you that they're interested in or their hobbies. And then you can go back into your Wizen CRM and we have a tool called our RSS feed and it's where it'll pull blogs. So you can follow blogs that your clients are interested in, maybe on golf. And then it just makes it really easy when you need to get something out in front of them. You know, each month you can just go pull up all your golfers and that, that category is just going to be growing. The, the longer you're in the business, you'll just have more and more people that are in your hikers or bikers. And then you just pull up that, that category and you hit the RSS and it'll pull up all the latest blogs on golfing or hiking. And then it just makes it very easy to click a button and pull the content right in and send that out to all your golfers. So you don't have to always be sending real estate related content to your database. It, it, it's, it's actually a lot better to send them things that they're interested in, at least in the mix, um, just personal interest, and then they're still going to see your branding and your logo with your company information on the bottom of it. So in their head, when you say, hey, I saw this article and I thought about you, that's going to make a huge impression on them. And then they're going to remember you're in real estate and why, why, why you yeah. can do it. And, and I think that'll, um, that kind of answers Natalie's question here is um, try, trying to get um, the emails to go into people's inbox is that if they're reading, um, so mail servers have become really intuitive. And so if you're sending the messages that they're interested in, obviously they're gonna open those messages and that will create just a better open rate for, um, for you as well as a better um, likelihood of them going into their inboxes. So if you're sending them stuff that they're not interested so your subject line has to um, really be really solid and a good um, something that will trigger them to to open up that email and then you should be sending them content that they want to read right so send them things that they're interested in and that's what I think goes with what Brandon was talking about with the RSS feed is that if they're interested in golf or gardening or whatever it is send them that information it doesn't always have to be real estate related or it could be that you send them about golf or gardening and then you know under that then you kind of have like a um, you know, send them a, a landing page or your new listing or whatever it is, an advertisement in that. I think that's totally, um, you know, really good marketing um, tactic and, and completely legitimate in order to send them that. It's not any kind of um, any issues with that. Um, a few text funny. messaging uh, questions as well. And, and uh, as, far, as far as sending out the text, one of the cool things is that it tracks and, and, and you're able to then search after the fact and see, um, I want to see everyone that, that opened my text or everyone that didn't open a text message. So then you can narrow it down and maybe email those people or call them if they're, they're not opening your text. So you can um, filter through and, and see who's opening your text and who's not on, on each one. 
Yeah. Um, so someone's asking if we could go through an open house landing page and how to set up the um, when you when you go through a listing and follow up with people on a drip campaign. So let me show that because I think that's a really valuable thing. Um, so you can choose one of our templates. You know, we have a couple and of open house. Oh, go ahead. Before you before you jump on, just to explain what a landing page is, if there's yeah. anyone on here that doesn't know. Um, so a landing page is we, we've, we started getting a lot of calls of agents that said, hey, instead of buying my leads, I'm now interested in, in making, getting my, capturing my own leads. And, and so I've taken a, maybe a Facebook class and on how to make a Facebook ad. And they told me I need, when someone clicks my ad, it's got to take them somewhere to capture their information. And that somewhere, they call that a landing page or a squeeze page is another term for it. And so Wise Agent works with any landing page out there, but we've added landing pages in Wise Agent just to, to make it easier to have a place that, that has real estate related, you know, templated landing pages you can use for anything. And one of those things would be an open house, you know, so if you're going to hold an open house tomorrow, instead of having them come through and sign in on a piece of paper, and then you have to go try to read all the writing and add that into your CRM, you can just create a, a um, open house landing page. And that's where we're at here. Yeah. So that's a great explanation of what a landing page is. So um, you would use one of our landing pages and these are really simple and easy um, to, to edit. And I'll, um, I'll direct you to our support staff if you need help with that. But you just use one of the templates, you edit this how you want. Um, once you have it edited to to whatever your specifications are. Um, you have the little share link here, and this is where you would share it. This is the really important part is that you have to share it. Just don't create it and think it's gonna magically bring in leads. Um, and now you would have to post this somewhere, right? You can um, take this, um, either the short URL or just the page URL, and either put this in a body of an email or in a text. Obviously, if it's a text, I would say use a short URL because your character limits. Um, you can post it on Facebook. We've made it really easy for you to just post it in Facebook and you can just log in here and just with a click of a button, um, you can embed it to your web page, um, you know, your website. So you can you can do all those things. But once you've posted it and it's out into the world, um, then your next step is to go in and set up your lead rules. And this is the really important part is getting that um, getting that set up. So um, let's say here's my open house. Um, you know, that's the source that I gave, you know, this landing page. Um, that would be the source. And then I can assign it to a particular drip campaign. So I could say, put it on my video drip campaign. I can assign it to any categories um, that I want. And then I would be able to respond to it via email, um, text. This is a really important one. And we, we put in a, a canned message in here for you, but you can change this how you want. You can include a video. So if you want them coming um, to this listing that you have, include maybe your property flyer or you know you can include up to a 30 second video of this 30 seconds goes a long way so you can just have like a 30 second video that you upload here um, and then you know last but not least i think the notification of those leads are really important make sure that you're saying yes to this and that you're getting um, the notification of the leads so then of course you can start following up with them really quickly and easily um, and then if you're on a team go ahead and distribute those leads um, so hopefully, um, shoot, I forgot who asked that. Janice, um, Janice, that answers your question. Did you want to jump in, Brandon, and say anything on that? Oh, I, I think we we lost internet connection for a few seconds there when you were going over that. Oh. And so just so you, you so you guys understood um, where where she was going right when when it lost on my side it was that um, as soon as anyone fills out one of your landing pages, their information automatically goes right into your CRM, and from there you can have all those rules that, that when we came back on that she was kind of going over what you can have automatically set up so so it doesn't matter if they're filling out your open house landing page right in front of you on your own on your ipad or your laptop and they're at your open house and you ask them hey sign in before you walk through they fill it all out well that can start off a different set chain of, of events where it'll say hey thanks for stopping by on my open house on main street you know and you can really talk to them completely different than someone that has your landing page and they hit it off of a, maybe a Facebook ad, then you're gonna talk, you're, you're gonna have them go through a different series of emails and texts, you know, to help convert them than the people that are coming from your open house. Yeah. So we just make it e very easy to set that up and automate the whole process. 
Yeah, exactly. So, um, and then someone's asking the um, the cost structure for landing pages. So landing pages are, um, you know, you get one included in your account, and then it's an additional $5 a month for each additional um, landing pages. So, um, so that is um, so you can works. you can have you can make as many landing pages as you want, and you can turn one off and turn another one on. That's all included. But if you want to have more than one landing page running at a time, then they're five dollars additional to have multiple landing pages running at the same time. Yes. And we have some people have thirty or forty landing pages running right now. So. Yes. And then I know um, this question was asked a couple of times here. So, um, does Wise Agent prevent you from sending a one-off email if they've unsubscribed? Yes, so if they have unsubscribed from your emails, um, you are not able to send out even a one-off email. Now, um, there, if they, you know, unsubscribe from your newsletters and um, they still want to get that, um, you know, your transactional emails, um, then just go ahead and contact our support staff, and they will, um, they'll help you through all of that. So hopefully that helps you, Manny. Um, if they accidentally unsubscribe, we can get it yeah. back over for you. So. Yes, exactly. So, um, and then Miguel, I will be calling you after um, we get off this um, later on this afternoon. I'll be reaching out to you about your questions. So, um, do, did you have a, something that you wanted to add? Oh, I just was to say another another key to to the business. What someone's bringing up is knowing your numbers, and so you, and the answer is yes. We we have a commission tracker in place um, that that lets you as soon as you log in. You can see all the numbers. You know exactly how many listings you have, what what's expired, what's pending, what's sold. Uh, right when you log into the system. Yeah, I know there's um, quite a few questions here. I'm trying to go through them, so sorry if I keep my eyes keep darting back and forth. And I see some stuff on Facebook as well. And hopefully, um, Bree or Shonda that's on is. But I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna put my glasses to read these. So, um, okay, people are asking oh, if we're recording this. Yes, we are recording this, um, and you will if you've registered for um, this webinar. You will be getting a recording of it. Um, and if if you didn't register and somehow you're watching us on Facebook or wherever, um, you can reach out to our support staff and we'll get the recording to you. It'll also be on our YouTube um, channel as well. So. Did you and the, uh, the day planner question. Yes, yes, we have an amazing day planner. And, and I think that was, you know, before I started running my business out of a CRM, I was just like, it was like most realtors and had sticky notes everywhere, folders coming out of my car. Every time I opened it, you know, the paper, just papers. And um, that's a, another great piece of advice is, is absolutely you need to be run your business work out of your calendar. Um, be in control of your calendars, sets your, sets your day planner up, you know, at least the day before. So every night before I leave here, I log in to YZ and look and see everything I have scheduled for tomorrow. And so I can be mentally prepared for that. And, and, and uh, I think that's just, just good advice. One of the cool things about our day planner is that when you're scheduling things, you can link any event to your contacts. And so it'll automatically add notes to that contact and, and, and you can mark it as events completed and it'll record that as well. So um, down the road, when you go back to those important contact notes we were talking about, not only do you see all the notes you've added, but the system will automatically be adding new notes for you if they were linked to the contact. So you'll see all the appointments that you had created and, and completed or any of the calls, same thing. So the system is always adding a lot of automatic notes just to help you put that timeline in place when you do click on a contact you're seeing the whole story in the notes right there. Yeah, and so um, someone's asking, there's a couple more questions here. On landing pages, if I create my own landing page on my website, do you have an API or method for capturing leads? So if um, we do have our own API, and then you can also, if you're, um, if you're creating your own landing pages, if it's a WordPress site, we have a plugin as well that you can use, but we do have an open API. Um, and so Rob, if you wanna reach out to our support staff and ask for the API and they'll get that to you. Um, so yes, we, we do have that. Um, and somebody else is asking, do we have any coaching system in, do we have a coaching system in place to help people set up their CRM? Do you wanna answer that one, Brandon? No. So uh, there's a few answers to that, I guess. We, we work with a lot of the different coaches in the industry. Um, and, and picking out a coach is really about, a lot about your personality. So 
So take some time. Most, all, all the coaches are, are now in the industry are really good about putting a lot of free content out, free videos on YouTube and on Facebook almost daily. So it makes it really easy for you to um, pick out a coach by following them, follow several of them for, you know, for, for a time period to see who you're really um, understanding and who you like. And, and uh, you're also, while you're following them, it's, it, it's not just to pick it out, you're also getting a lot of good free advice um, from the coaches. And, and that kind of goes along with our partners and, and, and systems. Do you want to show the partners page and the, and the, new, oh, I can. Uh, the new marketplace that we have now? Um, yes. because so we are adding more and more coaches into our system so we can we can definitely give you uh, some coaches if you or, or tell you if your coaches work with us and if they don't we're happy to add those at, uh, you know train them on wise agent crm um, we are the most integrated crm in the industry so while um, a lot of a lot of other systems say they're integrated and they're using third-party tools in in the middle um, we've got done a lot of work over the years and built relationships with all of these companies you're seeing here and have direct relationships with them. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I had to put on my glasses so I could read some of these questions. So <laughs> um, there's one question here from Jared that's asking, um, you know, that he set up his Gmail to save all the email addresses um, from anyone that he sends an email out to. Um, and because of that, you know, and he's wondering how that would work with the um, Gmail contact sync. sync. And so, you know, I think that, I think it's a kind of nifty feature that Google has created. Um, but then I also feel like sometimes that can be a nuisance just because sometimes you're replying to maybe a Craigslist ad or to some other kind of ad and you're like, got some crazy, you know, Craigslist long email in there that is not anything of importance to you. Um, so what I, I always suggest to people is, you know, turn that setting off. Um, so then you don't have a bunch of junk in that. Those all go into your other contacts folder. And what we say is before you do a, a Google contact sync, and I think we have, and I know for sure we have a blog and a video about this, but, um, and our support staff can help you, but um, definitely go through and clean that out. So move all of those from like the other categories into your, um, to your regular Gmail contacts and then find and merge any duplicates. So um, that's really important to do before you start syncing. We do have a find and merge duplicate on our end as well. Um, you know, Gmail or and Google, they have um, just a, a few more um, developers than we do and they have a little bit higher of a budget than we do here. And so they do that part really well and really automated. Um, so I always suggest to people just to get that cleaned up before you start your sync. So then um, you don't have a lot of clutter and a lot of duplicates in there. Um, and if you so, need help with that stuff, make sure you lean on our customer support. They do this yeah. every day, um, helping, helping people get their database pulled over. So, so yeah. lean on them. And, and I also show the, uh, the marketplace. Yes, I'm going to show the marketplace. But on, on the support thing, you know, because I've mentioned our support a few times here today. One thing I want to just make clear is that we understand that people learn differently. And, you know, and we're, we embrace all of that. So there's some people that are just like, I want to type in a question really quickly and find the answer. So we're like, go for it. You can do it that way. So you can type in your question here and then search for answers. Um, the other thing is we just have... A, um, you know, you're just like, I want to call somebody. I just need somebody on the phone to walk me through it. So give us a call. We post our phone number in here as well. Um, and then there's other people. And I think, you know, this is more, I know more, more Brandon's alley. He just likes to watch a video and not a long one. So they're less than five minutes long. Um, go in here and just find the video that's, you know, most, you know, that, that you want to learn about and, you know, watch the video and you'll be able to um, really get get a good understanding of what it is that we're doing here. So, um, so I wanted to mention our our help and all those different channels that we have. Um, as and far that, as our, oh, uh, that 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 customer support page, the contact us. That is twenty four hour a day, seven days a week. So we're the only yeah. company in the real estate industry. After all these years, we're still still doing it. So it's kind of what what what's made a, we've made a name for ourselves by giving great support, and we're going to keep that up. So. Um, anytime you need help, day or night, weekends, um, make sure you just fill out that form and hit the button. If we don't answer your phone when you call, then we'll call you back. 
Yeah, how that exactly. Exactly. And so um, I'm going to go, I'm like, where should I go? Where should I go? Someone's asking about mm -hmm. KCM. So let me, let me just talk quickly about KCM because I think Brandon already talked about it. Um, mm -hmm. That is not it there. That's not it. Uh, KCM, for those of you that don't know, it, that's a, another company in the industry in, in keeping current matters. They do, they're an amazing partner. You put out a lot of great, great content that you can, you can subscribe to and um, content that you can use to forward on to your database and add to your, your own blogs um, just to, uh, to keep, up, keep your name and your face out there. But uh, their content, they do a lot of research behind it. So it is, it's really uh, well thought out. So you can show yeah, them. So, yeah, works. so um, this is part of that RSS feed tool that Brandon already mentioned earlier, um, earlier this morning. So basically you can go to our RSS feed and um, you know, subscribe to Keeping Current Matters to that blog. And then with a click of a button, it'll bring in the picture, the image of the blog. It'll go through, you know, give like a little brief synopsis of the blog and then link to it as well. So um, this is something that you can share out to your, um, to your clients and then it'll go out, you'll, you can preview it. And so when I click on this, homes are rapidly disappearing, it'll take me to that blog that, um, you know, that, that um, they wrote. So that's a great way of, of doing that and sending out that. You, one of the other big things on this, when it pulls it over, if you, if you scroll up, is that it, it pulls in the subject okay. line for you. So that's a huge reason someone had asked earlier, how do I get more of my emails into the inbox versus into the promotions or any of the other um, tabs? And, and they say um, using, using well thought out subject lines that people are gonna wanna click and so that's one of the cool things about that RSS tool is it, it actually pulls the subject line in for you. They should get more of your your uh, emails open and read. Yes. Um, yeah. So um, was there any other? Let me see. I'm I'm trying to go through some of these questions. And, yeah, we're getting a lot of some lot long of ones, and I'm like, oh, I, I got to read this and and. Uh, if we don't get to to some of the questions, because there's a lot of questions coming in, just yeah. know that. Um, we are going to have this video. Uh, we'll send out the recording to this, but also our customer support is standing by, and, and we will reach out to you with some of these other questions if there's some long ones um, that we don't yeah. get to, and make sure you get answers. Yeah, and I think Jr. Um, I think Brandon already um, talked to um, the part of like um, partners and, and coaching. So he, um, Jr.'s question was, um, have we partnered with any marketing specialists like Tom Ferry, Craig Proctor, um, who offer um, an integrated system with training that integrates wise agents. So, um, yeah. Boy, uh, yeah. Speaking of coaches, uh, and we 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 love we love the real estate coaches. I think it's a, a big, big thing for you to when you can to get coaching. And like I said, you can start getting coaching for free by by tuning in to you know all of their YouTube's and Facebook right off the bat. So um, it's it's not about if you if you don't have the money, you can still take advantage of some of the coaching, but. Uh, last week, Eleni had a coach on that I just I just loved his attitude, yeah, full of energy. Um, who was it? J Man. J Man. J, J yeah, Man seminars. Is that is that what it, how you J find him? Yeah. Um. Uh, Jeremiah Monero. So J Man. He's um he's a speaker for NAR actually. Um. Okay. He's yeah. So he's actually speaking in a little bit. Um, yeah, he's, like he's out he's out of the New York area, I mm -hmm. believe from from last week. But just full of energy. Um. You can watch her her uh, video from last week the yeah. webinar and I really liked, liked him as well yeah he had some he had really great energy and um, really good things to share about video he does a lot of video content and like I said he's also a speaker for NAR and so he's doing um, this morning he sent me a video this morning he's doing the battle of the DJs the realtor DJs at NAR um, so that's, there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so that was very cool um, a couple of more questions that um, came in someone, Ron, you asked me something earlier and to show something that I already did and I don't know what it was that I was showing. So I'm sorry, I didn't, I don't know what I was showing at the time when you posted that question. Um, but if you wanna reach out to support or, or repost what I was showing and I can show that one more time. Um, are there any plans to add an iOS app? So as far as an application for, you know, Wise Agent as a platform is a huge platform. And so um, just having an application for Android or, or Apple that would be, um, you know, offline kind of thing. It just really doesn't 
you know, work that way. Um, so getting, you know, we do have the native um, web app that you can just go to. So if you go to wiseagent.com from your phone, it'll come up with a mobile responsive app. So that's how that works. So it wouldn't be um, something that would be in your app store. But, um, and then another question. So we, do, so we do have an app and it'll yes. work with, with Apple or, or uh, Samsung. And we'll give the less technical question, the less technical <laughs> answer. <laughs> The answer is yes. And you just go go right go right there from your phone. You'll be able to save it. The little icon will show up and then you'll never know the difference after you have your your, your little owl icon. Anytime you click it, it'll feel just like you're going to an app that you would have downloaded from the store. Yeah. Um, and then Janice is asking if we provide websites. So Janice, we provide landing pages, which are, you know, these individual websites our web pages, and you can link them together. And every landing page comes actually with two pages. So one would be your actual, you know, landing page with the form that you can have on there. And then it also has a response page to redirect them somewhere, right? So what we were showing earlier um, was, you know, here's the landing page for an open house, and then you can redirect them somewhere else to go to maybe your Facebook or, you know, somewhere else or your, um, you know, wherever your reviews are. Um, and so you can link actually multiple landing pages. We do have people that have linked multiple um, landing pages together to create kind of like a mini um, website. So it wouldn't be something hugely robust um, or any kind of IDX in there, but you can do that. Um, and well. same thing or with the, the single property websites. Do you want to show, did you show that or do you want to show that? Let's see. Oh, I can show that, yeah. So, so with those landing pages, you, you don't have to use them just as a form. Um, you can use it, you know, in this, what, what she's going to show now would be a single property web, website. So if you took a listing and you want to um, create, make a, uh, let's see if there's one in there already, there you go, make a, a, a web page or just a single, single site just about that one property. You can just take ours, fill in the blanks, change out the pictures, and then you'll have just a nice little, um, little uh, landing page you know that's a basically acts as a single property website you can add video to it and then you can capture leads right from that um that landing page so right. landing pages come in hand uh hand uh, you can use them a lot of ways but yeah if you um if you already have a website or you choose to go go with any other company we work with own I, I think just about every website provider in the industry we have an integration with uh, one way or another if you're capturing leads off of your website or any, any, any place you're capturing leads, let us know and we will help you to make sure that those leads automatically and immediately show up in your CRM. So, um, so the answer is yes, in any, any website, it will work. Yeah, and so um, Janice, for you or for anybody else, so if you can go from this single property website and create this landing page for one property and then take that and create a, a multi-property page, basically have, um, this page where, you know, you put in, you know, your branding up top, um, maybe just one image and then the more info and then this will link to this page here. Um, so then your multi property page is just a, features all of your listings um, and it doesn't necessarily have to have a contact form on it. It can, but you don't have to. This one does. Um, and then you can have it linking to other properties. So then they have, you know, so then you show more, more of those details. So that's another way around that as well. Um, so a couple of questions if we're integrated with realtor.com. We are, um, so you can get leads coming in from realtor.com, absolutely. Um, you can do that through, um, go through our knowledge base and we have step-by-step -step instructions on how, how that all works. I know that we're coming down to um, time here. I'm gonna just check my phone to see if we have any question, more questions here. But um, yeah, just so you all know, we, are, we did record this um, and this will be sent out to you all as well and in an email as well as being able to be found in our community. So if you've not joined our Facebook community, it's a great way to get um, resources, connect with other people, maybe that are outside of your market and get tips and tricks from them, share things I know um, in the past, we had Tamara on our webinar and she was, um, she was just fabulous. She was so much fun. Um, she was able to share her templates to people. So go ahead and connect with others um, in our community to share resources. It's a great way of, of um, connecting with people as well. So any, any last, um, last words from you, Brandon? Maybe um, what, what advice would you give realtors today? 
Uh, today, I, I was, it's the same advice. I would have to say, um, run your company, run your real estate business like it's a company. Like, um, have it in your head, especially if you're just starting. Act like you just bought a franchise, like you just bought a McDonald's, and you're going to want to know everything about it. You're going to have to have a process in place for, and a, you know, a process for every part of the business. And you're going to want to know that before you start just jumping in and say, hey, I'm going to hire someone to do my transactions and hire someone to do this. You need to be the one that puts that in place first, get your processes all figured out, and then make those duplicatable so that um, you're not the one that has to continue doing all this work after you know exactly what you want. Then you need to be able to say, hey, here, when you do bring on your first assistant or your transaction coordinator, or whatever that first move is to build that team, um, you need to already have the systems and processes in place. And that's really what a CRM is all about is, is organizing your business and getting it all ready so then it becomes duplicatable and that's how you can expand. So um, that would be my advice. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon, for um, for today and for everything that you shared with us. Um, thank yeah, you I had a good time for, on here. Thank you for yeah, having me. Thank you and thanks for everyone for joining us.